Today we continue our series of the fall and restoration of Peter. We are at step 6 of the fall of Peter and have already seen that Peter overestimated himself, slept and consequently didn't pray. We also saw that his condition of heart became visible to others in his actions and he exposed his distance to the Lord. Today, we'll see him in the midst of the Lord's enemies. So I'm going to read again, Matthew 26, verse 58. But Peter followed him at a distance to the high priest's courtyard. And he went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Peter has now arrived in the court of the high priest. He goes in and voluntarily sits with the servants. He is in the midst of the Lord's enemies among the scoffers. Psalm 1 makes it clear that the place of blessing is not among scoffers. Although he is in the wrong place, Peter has lost the feeling that this is wrong. His fleshly behavior brought him to this place. But how inconsistently does he act? What a contrast when we see how Peter tried to fight the enemies of the Lord with the sword before, and now he is sitting among them as if nothing happened. Step by step, Peter lost all his spiritual strength and discernment. He even seems comfortable in the midst of his enemies. They light a fire and sit around it, with Peter among them. Oh, Peter, don't you know what these people have already done to the Lord? They have mocked him, despised him, and called him Belzebu, and have now captured him unjustifiably. Is this the right fellowship for you? Peter should have known what was coming. The Lord had already pointed out earlier that he would have to be taken prisoner and that he would have to suffer much from the elders, the high priests and the scribes, and ultimately would have to die on the cross. At that time, Peter rebuked the Lord, but the Lord rebuked him seriously, saying, Get away behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for your for your mind is not on the things that are of God, but on the things that are of man. Peter, have you forgotten all this? What did Peter think the chief priests and the scribes would do with the Lord now? To find that out, Peter came into the courtyard to see the end. He was curious to see what they would do to the Lord. He didn't seem to believe the Lord's words. Words that the Lord had spoken to disciples several times. He had to see it for himself, a typically fleshly behavior. And when it comes to us, aren't these all things we can find in our lives too? How quickly we can get to the wrong place without recognizing it, and showing the company of mockers so that in the end our behavior towards them becomes completely incomprehensible. We are no longer clearly on the Lord's side, but act in complete confusion, sometimes one way, sometimes the opposite way. Then we also forget the words of the Lord that he has spoken to us in his wisdom, to warn us, to prepare us and to give us clarity about the condition of the people in this world. We lose faith in the Lord's words. As a result, our flesh or our old eye determines all our actions and we can no longer resist temptation. Oh, let us take these warnings to heart and learn from the negative example of Peter here. Let us pray that the Lord will help us to stay close to him and that we will have recognized in time if we move away from him. Then we will learn more and more how the Lord opens our eyes to dangers. He allows us to experience how he keeps us in his great faithfulness and love.